supposed to do? Well, I keep saying, de-emphasize anxiety. Reassure people. You meet people who say, you know, I'm really scared. I'm, I'm scared about my job. I'm scared, 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 scared. It's just, you know, don't worry. You don't know enough to worry. That's God's dirt worry. Who do you think you are that you should worry for crying out loud? Don't worry. That's God's truth. It's a total waste of time. It presupposes such a knowledge of the situation that it is in fact a form of hubris. You know, now what you do is just pay your bills and you know, pack heat if you need to and don't worry, that's all. <laughs> yes. praying to the devil, that's great. Worry is betting against yourself. You know, Wee Po Yang, the, a great Chinese Taoist who wrote many, many commentaries on the I Ching, he was asked at the end of his life what was his conclusion of a life of studying the I Ching. He said, worry is preposterous. That was it. Don't worry, you don't know enough to worry. That's God's dirt worry. Who do you think you are that you should worry for crying out loud? Don't worry, that's God's dirt worry. You don't know enough to worry. That's God's dirt worry. Who do you think you are that you should worry for crying out loud? Your personal space 
It makes complete sense to me. I think you need to be able to see. Some of yourself in your arch nemesis. I think you need to be able to see some of yourself in your arch nemesis. I think you need to be able to see some of yourself in your arch nemesis. I think you need to be able to see some of yourself in your arch nemesis. What I'd like you to think about is whether or not you're ready to choose an arch nemesis. An arch nemesis. So let that be a motivational decision to propel you to try to keep working on something when you feel discouraged. To use an aspect of competition which is healthy. I'm very often reminded of my, my good friend Peter Thiel's admonition that competition is for losers. The idea that when you spend your time focusing on someone else rather than focusing on a very difficult problem, you often get distracted from what's really important and you find yourself in this kind of mimetic rivalry. I think that choosing an arch nemesis is a, is a slight exception to this generally pretty good rule. When I get discouraged, I don't feel like looking at physics. It does help me to think about the fact that somewhere out there, Garrett is catching a wave in, uh, in the waters off of Maui, thinking about physics and trying to push his theory forward. So I find that not dispiriting or enervating, but I actually find it energizing. I think you need to be able to see some of yourself in your arch nemesis. Some of yourself in your arch nemesis. I think you need to be able to see some of yourself in your arch nemesis. yourself in your arch nemesis. isn't something that you have to wait for. When you find somebody with whom you're competitive, where you have a lot of respect for that person, and you want that person to motivate you over a lifetime, and you feel ready to make this decision, remember you should only choose one, and it should be a long-term relationship. You should be in dialogue with that arch nemesis over time, and it should be energizing to you both. Just want to say, first of all, thank you very much. Without further ado, I suppose the time has come. Be well. People say things like, I do this in a kind of self-deprecating way. Well, I've been lucky in this, that. And you know very well that a lot of life is luck. Akira. But then a lot of it is, and it's underplayed. You also work hard. I realized some time ago that, because I'm born in Britain, I'm, I have that natural tendency to like underplay something. Oh, well, I'm just lucky in that. And somebody said to me, you shouldn't do that. You do work very hard. And I thought, Yes, but saying, well, I've been lucky in that is a nice way to say to other people, oh, I haven't really had the input, and you don't need to particularly either. It's a flattering thing to say to somebody else, which ignores wonderful 
phrase of Branch Ricky I came across. Luck is the residue of design. Luck is the residue of design. Luck is the residue of design. A lot of what we call luck, it has come about through something other than chance. I used to say, you're lucky to be born in America. And on one level, that's true, which is like, you could have been born in, in the great pool, and you could have been born in Mogadishu, and it'd be a lot worse. But there's also something it covers up, which is the luck is that people before you made good choices that meant that you are in a situation which is more optimal. And it's not simply luck that you have in America the right to freedom of speech. Luck is the residue of design. Luck is the residue of design. It's the consequence of men and women making good decisions. Residue of design. Luck is the residue of design.